Hello everybody, welcome back to the shop. We got a winter project here that I'm finally getting around to. This is a connecting rod and some caps off of a clee track of some sort. A friend of mine is rebu uh, rebuilding the motor and he needs some babbit poured on a couple of these bearings. Here's, here's one of the old bearings here. So I've done Babbitt. If you look in my previous videos, I did Babbitt on my Patton Brothers, but this is a slightly different situation here. I'm not pouring it using the uh, original journal surface as part of my mold, in this case the crankshaft. I am using a mandrel here, and he will be machining the bearing to the final size. So that makes my life a little bit easier. I'm just going to pour everything so everything is in the maximum material condition. You know, the largest ODs, the smallest IDs, and give them plenty of material to work with. And, uh, and that's that. I mean, I, I, I really got that going for me. That'll, that'll make this job a lot easier. This is definitely a slightly different, or more than slightly different, um, procedure than pouring it for one of my oil field engines. So I made, luckily I have at my disposal at the farm a lathe and uh, I've got a little bit of skill and even less tooling and I was able to make some basic stuff for for pouring this. I have a, a mandrel here that is smaller in diameter, I think by like 50 thousandths smaller than the original crankshaft so that'll give plenty of extra material to bore out and I also have these two special spacer washers here is one proper uh, not broken bearing that he or bearing pair that he gave me to just kind of look at so you see there's a you know a little stick out of bearing on either side so what these washers are for, they're going to go like that and just be like a little, uh, you know, little well to allow the Babbitt bearing material to pour up higher rather than just pouring flush and even with this cast iron surface. So that's what those washers are for. I made two of them, of course, one for each side. Uh, the mandrel, not much to say about that. It's just, luckily I got a pretty nice smooth surface on it. I must have actually had a sharp tool and the corner of the tool or the tip of the tool rather just so happened to make a pretty nice radius in there and of course this bottom flange is is wide enough to encompass everything so the general plan I don't know if this is the right way but this is what I figured to be the best way with what I have available to me and uh, if you guys have done a similar job and have done it differently, I'm sure you've done it differently. There's more than one way to skin a cat with this sort of stuff. Uh, leave a comment down below if you, even better yet, if you've done a video, let me know because I'd like to learn more about doing this sort of, sort of a task. But at any rate, the plan is to set this up on a flat surface, not this greasy wooden thing. Have the mandrel here have the first spacer ring here, have the cap and rod bolted together with two layers of this cardboard shim stock and two, th there's a reason for having two layers, we'll come to that in a moment and then I will shim up this far side the, uh, the wrist pin side so that everything is level and that'll be pretty easy I'll just uh, make some measurements of the thickness of this uh, mandrel base the washer this width here this width here and just do a little bit of math and figure that out figure out what a what I need for a shim on this side align this in the center as best I can by eye I might use a maybe a, a drill bit as like a feeler gauge to feel around to make sure everything is located as centrally as possible. Put this second washer up here 
and that I can just align by eye because all that is for is just making that little thrust surface on the side of the bearing and of course I'll dam all of this uh, I don't I have learned in the past that damming is really like a sealant it's not your your whole your whole uh, uh, Babbitt retention system if you have something where you have a real high uh, depth of Babbitt that you're pouring on the bottom side especially you want a lot of something there to, to hold it in like for example you might want a, like a flat piece of wood that's braced in there somehow with just some damming material as like how you'd use like RTV for example you know, it's like a gasket because the pressure of that liquid Babbitt is, is quite high because it's so dense and it'll really it'll tend to blow out uh, the, especially the lower you go because the pressure will be higher with, with it being a liquid of course this I don't have to worry too much I only got about maybe two inches of height and everything is pretty flat and everything is sealing together pretty well but I'll, I'll dam around here and up here up on top oh well back up a step this mandrel has to be smoked with acetylene soot so nothing sticks to it dam everything preheat with a torch to a couple hundred degrees so the babbit doesn't freeze especially it's uh, cold now it's winter so I make sure everything's nice and warm I'll heat up the babbit pour it in there wait for it to cool off then now I'll have just one one whole circular uh, bearing but we need two halves so I'm going to take this off take the bolts out and then two layers of this is a little bit more than the width of a hacksaw blade so I'm going to hacksaw through here through the gap through this cardboard and then through the babbit and that should separate this into two pieces all right so I've cleaned up these pieces with uh, some carburetor cleaner and a wire brush now I'm just giving them a heat heat up to drive out any oil that may be soaked in this is cast iron and cast iron is very porous sometimes on a particularly porous piece once you get it hot enough you might see a little one little spot a little dot that keeps oozing oil out these are pretty clean though all right so now I'm smoking the mandrel pure acetylene flame the mandrel and also the uh, that little washer So here we are all set up. This is just a weight on here to help keep everything in place. I dammed everything up best I could. For damming today I'm using a mixture of cornmeal and flour and water. I have used in the past this stuff. I, I bought it from uh, Roto Metals which is where I buy my Babbitt and it works okay but it's kind of hard when it's cold and it gets softer when it heats up and so as a result it just kind of falls off so I'm thinking this flour and water mixture might kind of cook and harden as it gets hotter so hopefully that works okay so here's my setup I got the ladle clamped in the vise if I was doing a bigger pour like with my Patton brothers I had a I made a little stand for this to put over my propane forge but I don't need to do that with this little pour so I've already choreographed my, my moves figure out what I'm gonna do make sure all my tools and stuff that I need are where they where I need them and we're ready to go so I'm gonna heat this up I, I have to do two things at once I have to heat this up and melt it I also have to preheat the the, uh, the whole set up here the mandrel especially 
So what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to melt this first. And this keeps its temperature for quite a while. So I'm going to melt this and skim the slag off that floats on top and then preheat the, uh, the mandrel. I'm going to stir with a pine stick, just a wooden stick. This is a paint stirrer, I think. Uh, this is a good tool to use. Firstly, it's, you know, you can find them everywhere. And on top of that, when the pine, when the wood just starts to char, just barely turns like a maple syrup, you know, color, that's when this is the right temperature. You can overheat this and you'll burn off certain metals, uh, you know, alloying elements, and you'll, uh, you'll mess up the babbit a little bit. Also, once, you know, I'll skim the slag off, and I'll stir it, and I'll stir from the bottom up. And what that does is it remixes all the elements, the alloying elements. The more uh, dense stuff will sink to the bottom once it's molten, and the more uh, light, less dense stuff will float to the top. So you want to make sure that's all well incorporated before you pour. Also, I have an excess of Babbitt. I have this whole puck. All the excess Babbitt I have, I pour into a, a muffin tin, and that makes nice little ingots for later use. Oh, and also, as you see, I've got welding gloves on. I switched my, my hat out for a welding hat and safety glasses and a face shield because if anything does pop, if there's a little moisture or oil anywhere, that'll vaporize and blow shit everywhere. It can be pretty bad. It's never happened to me, but uh, it's definitely something that you don't want to happen. Flip this back right out on the floor. Put some heat into this mandrel. I'm not even really going to move the torch at all to the side. I don't want to cook that um, damming off. I'm hoping just the incidental heat will travel through. I also have temple sticks. I don't have one out. I didn't feel like using it, but a temple stick, it's like a crayon, but it melts at certain temperatures, and they have different temperatures available. So you could use that to determine the temperature of your mandrel that you're pouring around. So I think that's good. I'm going to put some more heat into here. If you don't get the babbit hot enough, it'll freeze. It'll freeze too soon. It's not so hot enough. You know, here I am wondering, like, it smells like somebody's cooking something and it's, and it's burning. What, what the hell does that smell? And I realized my damning compound is made out of flour. It smells like you burnt bread. 
I'm going to heat up the size of the ladle too so it doesn't freeze you know, while I'm pouring it. Yeah, we're good now. We'll turn that off. Luckily everything holds its heat so you don't have to rush too much, you don't have to freak out. Alright, so I unfortunately I gotta pour this so you can't see it, but whatever, you, you get what you're paying for. hear that sizzling. You uh, you can hear and that's the sound of failure. This damning material didn't work. It must have uh, whatever it got heated up down at the bottom, popped, you know, the moisture in here, the water um, turned into steam and it was just blowing through the babbit. So this is this is garbage. This is no good. So Rip it all apart, do it again. Well, in taking it apart, I kind of learned something. I might have had to, even if this poured well, might have had to redo it anyway. Let me take a look. Here's that bottom shim. See it shifted over. So that little thrust side of the bearing, it's large there and about non existent on this side. So I think what I'm going to do once I melt all this off is, uh, tack weld this washer onto the mandrel, keep it centered. So here's the modified tool. I just did a couple little tacks with the 120 MIG and I used this this handy attachment for a sliding square to find a, a center line. You kind of see I scraped it across there and used my angle, angle grinder, cut two slots in right down to the main diameter of that mandrel so that'll make it a little bit easier to saw through with the hacksaw and when I get this ready I'll just pack that full of damming material so the damming material that I'm going to use is what I mentioned before it's that stuff from Roto Metals like I said it does kind of get soft when it heats up but I've never had that popping problem with it so let's uh, hope for better luck second time around also I noticed that when I was taking it all all apart, the babbit came off very easily from these uh, both top and bottom, even though I hadn't smoked them. So I did a small modification. I just drilled some little little short holes on the cap and the rod, and the babbit should flow in there and just lock itself in. I would have gone deeper if I had more material, but I was afraid of uh, drilling drilling too far through, so that's, that's all I did. It, it should, at the very least, it should help. Alright, so it is all cooled off. Took the damming off and take a look at it. Seemed to go pretty well. This top spacer ring here, or not a spacer, but you know, to make that little thrust part of the side of the bearing, seems to have kind of floated up a little bit. There's a gap there, you can see that filled in with Babbitt. But I, I think that'll be okay. So we'll see when we take it off. Since the babbit flowed over the side of this washer, I don't think I can easily take this washer off, so I'm just going to cut through cut through that washer as well. All right. So, it came apart real nicely. Just cut through
through that slot like I planned with that soot on there it came off pretty well and there you have it this came out pretty damn good considering now you see this is the uh, this is the top side so you can see there's that like lip on the very top there where I filled it over which of course is fine that can just be machined off and then you, know, you can see there where it where that ring floated up a bit but again that's not a problem that can just be cut off and machined with the rest of this thrust face and there's the bottom that came out really really nice not that it really matters this is this is oversized anyway this will have to be machined but that came out real real slick really nice. One minor little, not even really a problem, but you know, hacksawing through, I did scrape up that surface a little bit, you know, the cast iron surface there. Uh, I don't think it's a problem if if it is or or if, you know, the guy who I'm doing this for doesn't like it, I imagine he could, you know, this is going to be machined anyway, just machine off a couple thousandths off this face and then compensate with an extra shim on the bearing but I think I think that's that, that'll be fine over here on the bottom on the cap there was a little like porosity see how it looks just like uh, more wrinkly and crinkly compared to you know like that where it's nice and smooth Babbitt, just like anything, will shrink when it cools, so it's always good to have a lot of extra material up top, so as it cools it can shrink and pull, pull some uh, still molten Babbitt in as your bearing cools. I sort of kind of had that, I mean I kept like dribbling the Babbitt in as this was cooling, and this Again, this, this thickness here is, I think it's like 50 thousandths over thick. And also, with the surface tension there, I could pour it a little bit higher yet. And I did have damming up even higher, but right here is where the damming kind of just bl broke out because I didn't really spend too much time making that part really nice. So it's a little kind of porous, and this little part I was able to just kind of flake off and break off. But looking in there, it's hard to see on the camera, but it doesn't look like there's a hole going in there. It's just not really nice and clean and pretty. Uh, maybe you can even see, again, this is the bad spot here. You can even see, it just looks a little more grainy. That's a good word, a little more grainy here compared to down here. This part would be the would have been the bottom. So anyway, I don't think it's a problem. Especially, this is the cap. This is, you know, it's along for the ride. It's, it's this end of the bearing that gets all the abuse. So I think this will be just fine. So I have to pour a second one. Well, I have to pour a second cap. So even though I really don't want to, because this came out so damn nice, I think I'm going to melt the Babbitt out of this and do my setup exactly the same, because this setup worked great it should work great again. Well there you have it everybody. I did the second pour. I didn't film it, you know, it was just about the same as the first go around. And that's that. I got another really nice looking uh, rod bearing, rod side bearing, and then another good cap. This cap is it came out a little bit better than the first one. I was showing you that porosity. I really made a big, big well of damming up here, so I had a whole lot of extra, extra babbit up top. You can see I, I had to file a bunch of this away to get it to release that little spacer ring there. So, of course, you know, the more you do it, the better you get, but I, I really don't think this one will be a problem. 
and if it is, I'll I, you know I'll report it. But I'll give it to my friend and see how he likes it. I'm I'm sure he'll like it. I mean, still even this is the worst one. You know, 95% of the bearing is good. It's just a little screwy section there. So I think those those are pretty nice. Those came out really, really well. I'm I'm quite happy with the technique. You know, again, you know, like I mentioned, the only downside is that you're, I'm kind of scratching up the this face here a little bit with the hacksaw. Uh, there may be other ways around it, so I don't have to do the hacksaw. Maybe if I had metal shims in there, just like a, a you know a U shape, uh, and I could loosen the bolt and just pull that little shim out. If I kept like a tab here, I could pull it out, and then I, then I could just drop the saw blade right down to the babbit. I don't know, but I think, again, it worked out pretty damn well. I'm, I'm happy with it. Again, it'll have to be machined. This is not uh, final. And of course, I know these oil holes will have to get drilled out and cut some oil grooves uh, lengthwise this way. So this isn't like my, my Patton Brothers Babbit pouring where I poured it in place using the crankshaft at, you know, using all the bearing surfaces as the mold. So when you're done, all you got to do is, you know, drill out the oil holes, and, you know, maybe make some grease or oil slots, and that's that. But that's that. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned something. And I would like to learn something, too. If you have done this and did, did it differently, I'm sure you did. If you did it a better way than I did, which I'm sure is very well possible, let me know, or even better, uh, send me off, send me a, a link to your video. There are not that many videos on YouTube explaining how to pour Babbitt. There's a ton of videos of people pouring Babbitt, and in my opinion, there's a lot of people do pouring it pretty, pretty badly. Um, but it's just a, it's very, very simple, but it's kind of a lost art at the same time. So. That's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure to hit the thumbs up if you like this, and hit the subscribe button to keep up to date with my other projects that i got going on. And, uh, well, Christmas will be a little bit past by the time this video gets out, but Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. And uh, that's that. See you next time. Thanks for watching.